Good morning, everyone, and a good Shabbos. Nachman of Breslov once said that uh, adults tell stories to children to put them to sleep. But I tell stories to adults to wake them up. When we look at the book of Bereshus, it's mostly stories. But the point of these stories is to awaken us to our potential. Because what a story does is, it shows you what a person is capable of doing. And when you see what someone is capable of doing, you aspire and you're inspired to want to do the same. And then opening in this week's parsha, we have the story of Avram Avinu. And how at the age of 99, after performing the painful surgery of Brit Milah, he runs to greet his guests. And this story is meant to inspire us that when we have guests, we should treat them the way Avram Avinu treated his guests, with the same love, with the same warmth, with the same hospitality, with the same generosity. Now, we know that these guests were no ordinary guests. They were actually three angels. And we're told by Rashi that each one had a mission. One angel was there to tell Avram and Sarah that God was going to bless them with a child in their old age. The second one was there to heal Avram Avinu from his circumcision. And the third one was on a mission to destroy the wicked cities of Sodom and Amora. So the question is, we understand why the first two angels had to come to Abraham's tent. One had to notify them that they're going to have a child, the good news of the birth of Yitzchak. And one had to heal Abraham from the circumcision. But the third angel should have gone directly to Sodom and Gomorrah to perform his mission and destroy the cities and save Lot and his family. Why did he have to go to Abraham's tent? What does the mission of rescuing Lot and his family from Sodom and Gomorrah have to do with visiting Abraham's tent? And one of the beautiful answers given is as follows. Before God could pass judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, before he could destroy those cities, for their lack of hospitality, for their lack of generosity, for their cruelty towards guests, God had to show this angel why they were deserving of such a severe punishment. By showing them what Avram does, how he runs at 99 to welcome people into his house, strangers, and feed them and give them everything they need. The angel was able to see what a human being is capable of doing and how he's capable of acting. And in contrast, now look at the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah who tortured a young woman for feeding a poor person. As Rashi says, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, this young girl who fed a stranger and was cruelly murdered and killed by the inhabitants of Sodom, the Contra showed us how decrepit, how depraved the people of Sodom and Gomorrah is. And that's what every story is meant to do, to show us what we are capable of becoming as human beings. And every story in the story of Horatius, even though there are only three commandments in the whole book of Horatius, every story is a lesson and an inspiration for us to try to emulate and act in the way that our patriarchs and our matriarchs conducted themselves. A story told about this Sadiq who was an unknown person. He was like a hidden Sadiq. He came to a certain town once, like, a, like a, a simple traveler, like a poor beggar. He came to town, he came to Shul, he needed a place to eat. And there was a simple Jew there, he says, look, I don't have a lot of food in my house, but whatever I have, I'll share with you. Come to my house for Shabbos. And this simple Jew took him to his house, and he spent Shabbos with him, and he fed him the best of his ability. Many, many years later, this tzaddik became renowned, famous. And now he came back to the same city, but now he came with an entourage. He came with chassidim, with followers. He came with a wagon driver, with four white horses. He was already a very respected tzaddik. And everyone heard this great tzaddik is coming to visit the town. So everyone came out to greet him. And the head of the community, like the president of the community, the Russia called the wealthiest Jew in town, sent a message that you and your guests are invited to spend Shabbos in my home. Big honor to have the tzaddik in his home for Shabbos, the wealthiest member of the community is inviting him to his beautiful home for Shabbos. And when this great rabbi, this great tzaddik heard the invitation, he told his assistant, take my horses, my four white horses, to the rich man's house and tell him that the horses should be his Shabbos guests. But he's going to eat and spend Shabbos with the poor Jew who invited him when he was in town many years ago. When the wealthy Jew, the leader of the community, got the response that the four horses are going to be his Shabbos guests, he was so offended. 
And he went to the tzaddik and he says, it's one thing if you don't want to be my guest, but why do you embarrass me like that? Why do you uh, humiliate me by telling me the horses should be my guest? And the tzaddik said, I'll tell you why I did it. He says, I was in this town 10 years ago. You didn't invite me for Shabbos. No one invited me, except that poor Jew. He says, now I come back, and all of a sudden I get this big invitation for you. So I ask myself, what changed? I'm the same person I was 10 years ago. So why, is it, why am I getting invited now and not 10 years ago? And then I realized it must be the four horses. Last time I came with my walking stick and my bag over my shoulder. Now I have a, a fancy wagon and four white horses. So I figured what you're impressed with is my white horses. So if that's what you're so impressed with, take my horses for Shabbos. But I'm going to the poor simple Jew who invited me last time. Sometimes we want to have the right guests at our table. You know, who came to my dinner party, the pre most prestigious people in town. And we have to remember that Avram Avinu invites three strangers, unidentified people. We don't even know their names. They're just three nomads coming through town. Because it's not how uh, important your guests are. Every guest should be treated like royalty. And even if it's just a wayfarer, you should welcome them and embrace them. Avram Avinu, the great giant, the great tzaddik, spends his time cooking a meal for three simple guests. Because as the rabbis say, when you receive a guest, you should treat them like you're receiving the Divine Presence.